Hey everyone, I've started a Patreon account. If you'd like to follow me there or become a patron, I would appreciate that very, very much. You can find the link in the description below, or you can just head over to patreon.com slash design chicky. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel. Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. Or if you need individual help from me for a renovation you're working on, find me on Patreon. In the meantime, let's get to today's topic. Today, I'm here to get a few things off my chest. You see, I see design mistakes everywhere, in real life, in magazines, even within my own circle, my friends, my family. So maybe you've made these mistakes too. Nothing bad is going to happen to you. We all make mistakes, but I'm here to tell you what they are. And if you can, if you want to, you can change it. So go forth and share this information with others in your circle. And eventually, we'll all make the world a better place, a more well-designed place. In no particular order, these are my biggest design pet peeves. Now that I think about it, I may actually have videos for all of these in more detail, so look for the links below. Small rugs are a problem, specifically in living rooms. Do you see my pet peeve? A small rug that is only big enough for the coffee table? So that means it's a coffee table rug. Have you ever heard of a coffee table rug? It's certainly not a living room rug. Living rooms are composed of several key pieces of furniture. There's usually a couch, maybe even a secondary couch, or additional seating of some kind, a coffee table, side tables, and maybe even some sort of TV or TV and fireplace. All these elements need to be pulled together. They need to be corralled in some way. And that area rug is the best way to do that. Think of the area rug as a base. It needs to hold all of these loose pieces of furniture together. It needs to physically sit underneath all of these items. It can't do that if the rug is too small. A small rug looks like it's floating along with all the other pieces in the room. You need a rug that is big enough so that all of the furniture can sit on the rug entirely or at a minimum have the front legs of the furniture sit on the rug. A living room without a rug is just a room with lots of furniture. A living room with a well-sized rug is now a lovely grouping of furniture where living room stuff can happen, where guests can congregate, conversation can be had. Netflix can be watched. One additional thing about area rugs, not only will the furniture be connected physically to the rug when the rug is large enough, but the rug can also connect all the pieces together through color. Your furniture may be various shades of color and sometimes the one unifying piece that you need to bring it all together is the rug. If you've got additional colors in the rug, you can use those colors as accents and pillows or accessories within the room. That will further connect all of the pieces to each other and to the rug below. That's a pro tip. I almost never find artwork that is hung too low. It's always too high, way too high. Too high above furniture, too high on its own, too high. I wonder how NBA basketball players hang their artwork. This is too high. This one is too high. And this one is also too high. First off, spacing between artwork and the furniture below it should be considered like a grouping. Think of them as pieces that belong to each other. You've chosen them to live together, so let them be close to each other. It's all about a visual connection. The rule is to leave six to eight inches between artwork and the couch below it. Or a console. Or the headboard of a bed. The other rule of thumb is to ensure that the middle of the artwork is about 60 inches from the floor. So when there's no furniture to help guide you, use the 60 inch measurement as your rule. The idea is that your artwork will be placed at eye level, an average person's eye level. These are better examples. Along the same lines as furniture needing to be connected to area rugs below, Pendant light fixtures need to be connected to what's underneath as well. 
especially in dining rooms. The dining room pendant above the table is such an important design feature, but it's also a practical element in the room. It's really a task light. Its main purpose is to light up the task of eating, so it needs to do that. It needs to hang above the table and provide light to the table's surface. Same with a kitchen island. Light fixtures that drop from the ceiling provide task lighting to the countertop. Their primary function isn't to light up the room or even the ceiling. It's to light up what's happening at that particular surface, whether it's the kitchen island or the dining room table. So my pet peeve, hanging pendants too high. Here's how to fix it. The space between the bottom of the light fixture and the top of the dining table surface should be between 30 and 36 inches. This is the same for kitchen islands with pendant lights above. That space should be between 30 and 36 inches. If you've got ceilings that are higher than eight feet, then you should add about three inches to that spacing for every additional foot in ceiling height. And the reason is that you have more space above you to play with. So that visual connection is skewed a little by the extra height of the ceiling, but not by much. Keep it to three extra inches for every foot. Just like artwork from a design perspective, the light above the table belongs to the table and the chairs, and they need to be visually connected to each other. Bringing them closer to each other allows your eye to group them together and it just looks like they belong together. I never see pendant light fixtures that are hung too low. Never happens. Recessed pot lights are best when they illuminate straight down. Sometimes you may have a pot light that can be tilted towards a wall so it can highlight a piece of art. That's okay too. But usually multiple recessed pot lights are installed evenly across the ceiling to provide an even level of light inside the room. But if you have a vaulted ceiling, pot lights tend to follow that angle of the ceiling. So my pet peeve is that your pot lights crisscross the room. They don't do a good job of lighting up the room. And they don't even light up the vaulted ceiling, which could be a great way to enhance the look of the room. I mean, a vaulted ceiling is a pretty big deal in the design world. Yes, you can have pot lights that tilt in this case as well, but I like pot lights that kind of disappear into the ceiling. They're not a design feature in my books. They are a practical design choice and should be as discreet as possible. So what's the fix? Look for ways to add pendant lights or chandeliers to light up the entire room. The light should illuminate the ceiling, giving you an extra wow factor for your vaulted ceiling, as well as illuminate the whole room below. I have other places where I avoid pot lights, but a vaulted ceiling is my biggest pet peeve. There are so many other amazing options for lighting up a room with a peaked ceiling that are so much more interesting. Something to consider. One major misconception when you're living in a small space is that you need small scaled furniture everywhere. This is why the apartment size sofa is so popular. It's a smaller scaled sofa that tends to be shallow in seat depth, a slimmer profile and shorter in length and less comfortable overall. But in my books, a sofa that is 68 inches wide is basically a love seat. It's not really a sofa. I'm not saying you can't buy apartment size sofas for your apartment or small living room. I'm just saying that it's okay to buy a larger size sofa so long as it fits and instead buy smaller sized pieces of other furniture within the room. So I feel like I need to be clear here. An average three seater type sofa is about 74 to 78 inches wide or even wider than that. So it's okay to buy a normal size sofa as long as it fits. You need to make sure it can be moved into the room so it needs to fit through your doors and your hallways and you need to make sure it fits in the room. Otherwise, go and buy an apartment size sofa. You can accommodate a larger size sofa if you choose smaller side tables or a smaller sized occasional chair instead. In fact, investing in a good size sofa is key because that's where you'll be sitting most often. You're not sitting in the occasional chairs. That's why they're called occasional chairs. Mixing up the scale of the furniture is a great way to make your small space feel like you're not sacrificing comfort for size. And it will also make the room feel larger because it just tricks the eye and your brain into thinking, wow, I have a room with a really great comfortable sofa in here. There are lots of ways to make your small space feel larger and buying all the tiny furniture isn't one of them. So here's your takeaway. My design pet peeves are just that, mine. They're not the end of the world, but they are based on my expertise and knowledge with regards to making a space look and feel like home. 
Little things like the size of an area rug and the mounting height of artwork and lighting all make spaces feel more balanced. And pot lights, well, I have a lot of opinions about pot lights. And most importantly, so much of interior design is based on scale and size. Sometimes it's worth investing in something that is maybe counterintuitive, so long as it fits. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you like the video, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you need individualized help from me, find me on Patreon. If you have any design questions, let me know in the comments below and it could be the topic of our next video. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.